So hello everyone welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this lecture, let's go through our camera object type. There is quite a few properties and tools that the camera has in Blender. Let's first start off with its properties in this case, taking a startup file of Blender, we can select the camera that comes with the scene and press 0 on the numpad. This will zoom us into the camera and there is still an outline that we can select even while we are viewing the camera. And now, similar to the amateur properties, a new icon is created based on the context of our selected camera. Let's move the window up a little bit and scale it accordingly with control, middle mouse click drag. So well in camera view here I can press G and move around. I can scale the camera with this, though that will have no effect on the view or anything that you see through the camera. Let's duplicate this cube and we can begin to move it half in and half out of the view screen. You'll notice that the box that projects out from our camera point exactly matches the bounds of the frame. So if it's inside this projected box, it will be seen in the camera. So at the top, we have our camera data block selector and all the properties below tied into that data. We have a focal length here based on millimeters and you can see the effect it's having on the camera. Now we are quite zoomed in with a higher focal length. This cube takes up pretty much our whole frame, but we can pull that back to around 50 millimeters. For something a little bit more natural, we can also switch here between perspective and orthographic. This won't be perspective, so it doesn't need to extend out the camera for an increased focal length. It simply uses an orthographic scale. It won't see any perspective, simply it will capture more or less in the frame. Imagine the camera completely projecting in one direction and capturing a rectangle. We can set our pivot point to the 3D cursor and then rotating the camera will create a turntable type. Effect around the 3D cursor as a focus. The options here change from focal length to orthographic scale as we checked before and we can. Also do a shift on the X or Y to adjust an offset while keeping the camera in the same position. We also have clip start and end, which is the distance based on these two values of what the camera will view. For example, if some things very close to the camera are getting in the way, you can up that value. And any objects outside the range will be completely clipped. The last type is panoramic. We will see the focal length, just like the normal perspective camera, but panoramic really shows its power when it comes to render time. It will take into account these areas where we can move our shift X and also our shift wire if we want to. And it will manage to increase the range around, left or right, up or down from the camera where it can capture the image and it will work it to fit within a normal image frame. So we have depth of field which will go through a little later and we have a camera tab where we can. Change our camera size and we have a sensor fit checkbox, an option to control which dimension either vertical or horizontal. The field of view angle fits uses the order option by default and that should be fine most of the time. If we come to the render settings, we could switch to cycles, for example, and this gives us a few extra options. The first main one here is panorama type. We have various options such as equirectangular. This will render a panoramic view of the scenes from the camera's location and use an equally rectangular projection that is always rendering the full 360 degrees over the x-axis and 180 degrees over the y-axis. This projection is mostly used for environment textures in the world shader so it can be used to render an environment map. We are also given minimum and maximum latitude and longitude. These are the limits of the vertical and horizontal field of view angels and feel free to download the panorama blend file included in the resources as I have done a render render just now in that file of an equally rectangular panorama. 
we can see here that it's doing a complete 360 horizontally and we can see a complete 180 from top to bottom in the vertical the next one is fisheye equidistant i will switch my render to you just to make the render a little bit quicker we will switch back to the camera settings and his fisheye equidistant compared to equirectangular this will squish down the view into a spherical mirror ball type panorama checking back to our menu we have fisheye equiv solid now this will best match real cameras. It provides a lens, focal length, and a field of view angle to help give a bit of extra customization. They both capture the same amount of image, except if you take into account the cropping happening in the vertical. But the sphere pretty much matches the same pixels as our previous render with the equidistant and the final panorama type is mirror ball. Now this will change the stretching into the center and the amount of view captured at the edges of the screen. It pushes more of the view into the edges of the sphere render. And this type is usually used to compare with a similar mirable photo that can be captured of an environment. To match it up for visual effects work. But I think it can be used as a Salmia type of HDRI and still may be useful. As for use in a background. And that's how camera lens properties, in the next lecture, we're going to go through camera navigation. And some other interesting camera specific tools. Thanks for watching this video guys, if you learned something from this video, please hit the like button, hit the share button and please subscribe to my channel also. If you have any query, if you have any suggestion, please let me know in the comment section, I will definitely reply your comment. So bye bye, take care and stay home guys.